Hello. In this video, I have explained the anatomy of uh, the large intestine of uh, ruminants. The large intestine plays a vital role in digestion in the ruminant animal. It is uh, involved mainly in uh, removing and absorbing fluids from the feces and also ejecting the feces to the external environment. So knowledge of uh, its anatomy and function is uh, important. So after going through this uh, tutorial video, you'll be able to identify and uh, briefly describe the anatomy of uh, the different parts of uh, the large intestine. And uh, this uh, includes uh, the anatomy of uh, the cecum, the ascending colon and its parts, and also the transverse colon, the descending colon, as well as uh, the rectum and the anal canal. You will also be able to explain uh, the blood and uh, nerve supply of uh, the large intestine. Now, the large intestine of uh, ruminants is made up of uh, the cecum, the colon, and uh, the rectum. So the cecum marks uh, the beginning of uh, the large intestine. And as we will see, the colon of uh, the ruminants, and particularly the ascending colon, has a unique configuration. Uh, the large intestine has uh, three primary functions. It is involved in absorbing water and electrolytes, meaning that uh, whatever material is coming from the small intestine, when it reaches the large intestine, the water is absorbed. In short, uh, it is dehydrated. And uh, also, it is involved in uh, producing and absorbing uh, vitamins. And uh, it's involved in uh, propelling or moving feces towards the rectum for elimination to the outside. Then the large intestine of, ruminant is, uh, of ruminants is more or less uh, similar in diameter with the small intestine, just except in certain regions where the diameter may enlarge. But uh, basically, the diameter is uh, more or less similar as the small intestine. Then uh, the large intestine has uh, no longitudinal bands or circulations as uh, is seen in the horse or pig. So it is basically just smooth without those longitudinal bands or circulations. Then with the exception of uh, the free end of uh, the cecum, the large intestine lies mainly in the supraomental recess with the small intestine. So the supraomental recess is going to be described uh, together with the omentum in the other video. I will start by describing the anatomy of uh, the cecum, which is uh, the beginning of uh, the large intestine. So the large intestine starts at uh, the cecum, and uh, the cecum is essentially just a blind ending pouch. It is uh, made up of uh, the following parts. There is a rounded uh, blind end, which in life lies at the right side of uh, the pelvic inlet. And then uh, there is also the body and, uh, of course, uh, an apex which continues with uh, the proximal loop of uh, the ascending colon. And also this one connects with uh, the ilium. Then the function of uh, the cecum uh, is uh, to break down some previously undigested fiber, fiber but uh, its uh, precise function is still unknown. It still remains unknown. So on the diagram on your right, we can uh, recognize uh, the cecum and a few other structures that are you know found within the abdominal cavity of uh, the ruminant and uh, we can see the cecum there with its uh, blind end and also its body then we can also see the idiosico junction which is the point at which uh, the idiom connects to the cecum we can also see the proximal loop of uh, the ascending colon and this one is going to be explained when uh, I explained the anatomy of uh, the colon or the ascending colon. Then we can also see the jejunal mass, which is arranged in a festoon, a festoon being just those uh, coils of uh, the jejunum. Then, of course, we can see the idiosico fold, which connects the ilium and uh, the cecum. So that is the brief anatomy of uh, the cecum of uh, the ruminants. I will now uh, briefly describe the anatomy of uh, the colon of uh, ruminants. So like in other animal species, the colon of ruminants is made up of uh, three main parts. So we have the ascending colon, the transverse colon, and uh, the descending colon. As we will see, the ascending colon is uh, quite uh, modified in uh, ruminants, just like uh, in uh, the horse and the pig. But of course, there are quite uh, some uh, significant uh, differences between the ruminants and uh, the horse and pig colons. So the longest of the three segments of the colon is, of course, the ascending colon. And uh, the ascending colon is uh, arranged in loops and coils. It has a proximal loop, a spiral loop, and a distal loop. That is the ascending colon. 
and uh, the proximal loop is the initial part of uh, the ascending column it is followed by the spiral loop which forms a disc like a spiral that consists of uh, three parts so this uh, spiral loop has uh, a centripetal coil then it has a central flexure and then finally it has a centrifugal coil which ends up uh, connecting into the, the distal loop and uh, this is the part which connects to the transverse colon and then the transverse colon connects to the descending colon so the great increase in the length of the colon of uh, the ruminant animal over that of carnivores is uh, mainly accomplished by the elongation of the ascending colon because the, uh, the ascending colon is extensively you know elongated in the ruminant animals on your right side uh, we have a diagram that shows uh, the different components of uh, the ascending colon and uh, we are just showing uh, some uh, parts of it some of uh, the parts uh, are, are hidden from view but the majority can be seen so here we can see the proximal loop of uh, the ascending colon shown by the black arrow there then uh, we can also see the centripetal gyri so this is uh, one of the coils that uh, loops towards the center of uh, this uh, spiral and it is called uh, the centripetal gyra so the gyra is just one arm of uh, those coils and this one is uh, the centripetal gyri then of course we also have uh, the centrifugal gyri and this is one of uh, the arms of uh, the coils that come out of the center and go towards the outside so that is the centrifugal gyri then we also have uh, the central flexure of uh, the spiral loop that can be shown there with the black arrow again so this uh, central flexure is uh, the one that connects uh, the centrifugal gyri and the centripetal gyri the rectum and the anal canal are the end parts of uh, the large intestine so in on this slide i'm going to briefly describe the anatomy of uh, the rectum and uh, the anal canal as well as uh, state some of their functions so i'll start with the rectum the rectum is uh, located in the pelvic cavity and uh, it marks the end of the large intestine together with the anal canal and it is the continuation of the descending colon it ends in an expanded section which is called uh, the rectum ampulla and uh, this is where the feces are stored before they are released via the anal canal so the rectum also consists of a cranial part which is uh, largely covered by peritoneum and it also has a caudal part which is not completely covered by peritoneum and this part is called uh, it's, a, it's a retroperitoneum meaning that it is out, outside the peritoneum so this makes uh, the caudal part of uh, the rectum to be mobile relatively mobile and uh, this allows for the flexibility during a pregnancy diagnosis or rectal examination so the rectum is attached uh, dorsally to the sacral promontory by a short uh, mesocolon and uh, the muscular layer of the rectum is uh, thicker than that of uh, the colon the primary function of the rectum is uh, of course to collect and hold the feces until the time of uh, release to the outside so the release uh, is uh, through the anal canal then the muscular wall of uh, the rectum uh, relaxes and uh, also it stretches to accommodate the feces that are coming from the colon and uh, these feces uh, gradually come out from uh, the anal canal while holding the feces the rectum absorbs uh, the remaining water and uh, the electrolytes and this is to further solidify the waste so the anal canal is uh, just a short uh, you know uh, canal in ruminants and uh, its functions are of course uh, include uh, the maintenance of fecal continence and uh, defecation fecal continence means uh, that uh, the anal canal prevents the fecal matter from just uh, dropping out of uh, the rectum so it acts like uh, some form of a valve and uh, this function is achieved with the help of uh, the anal sphincters and also the neighboring uh, puborectalis uh, muscle so that is uh, the brief anatomy of uh, the rectum and uh, the anal canal the two major blood vessels that uh, supply blood uh, to the large intestine of uh, ruminants are the cranial mesenteric artery and uh, the caudal mesenteric artery and these two are direct branches of uh, the abdominal aorta but as a general rule the abdominal structures that are derived from the embryonic midgut are supplied by the cranial mesenteric artery 
and uh, the structures of the embryonic midgut include uh, the ascending colon and the proximal two-thirds of the transverse colon. Then the structures that are derived from the embryonic hindgut are supplied by the caudal mesenteric artery. And uh, these structures include the distal one-third of uh, the transverse colon and also the descending colon. The specific arteries that supply blood to the large intestine include uh, the midocolic artery, the idiocolic artery, the right colic artery as well as uh, the rectal artery. So these, uh, that's the brief uh, description of uh, the blood supply of uh, the ruminant uh, large intestine. Nerve uh, supply of uh, the ruminant colon is uh, from two plexuses. So there is the cranial mesenteric plexus and also the caudal mesenteric plexus. Also, innervation uh, or nerve supply of uh, the large intestine is also dependent on the embryological origin, just as uh, blood supply does. So the midgut derived structures receive their sympathetic, parasympathetic and sensory nerve supply via nerves from the cranial mesenteric plexus. Then the hindgut derived structures receive their sympathetic, parasympathetic and uh, sensory supply via the nerves from the caudal mesenteric uh, plexus. So you have now come to the end of this uh, tutorial video on the anatomy of uh, the large intestine of uh, ruminants. So you should be able to identify and uh, briefly uh, describe uh, the anatomy of the different parts of the large intestines. That is uh, the cecum, the ascending colon and its parts, the transverse colon, the descending colon and also the rectum and the anal canal. You should also be able to explain the blood and nerve supply of uh, the large intestine. Thank you for watching.